Hi everyone, welcome back to the episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schulikoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question of the day is, how does stress accelerate biological aging? So first of all, we have to kind of decide like what is aging? Aging is kind of the process where um, we have cells that die off. All cells in our body have different types of uh, lifespans. For instance, like cells on our skin may only last you know, a few days um, versus cells in our gut maybe turning over weekly. Um, cells like red blood cells are like every 28 days. So there's really a large variety of, of cellular lifespans. And, but as those cells turn over, or we need turnover basically, so as those cells die, we have other cells that are being produced and made to then supply those tissues with what they need and for a continual repair and growth and regeneration. And what happens as we age is we have more cells that are dying than that are being produced or the cells that are being produced are not being produced as well or as optimally as the initial cells. Um, and then that leads to all the signs of aging that we see, like you know skin wrinkles or joint aches or vision loss, hearing loss, um, difficulty moving, weaker, uh, not being as strong, all those things. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna discuss a paper that looks at how stress can induce or accelerate that biological healing or biological aging basically from causing more inflammation, more stress, more damage to the cells that have a specific lifespan and are therefore supposed to be um, having that certain lifespan, but they may get damaged earlier where they start dying faster than they should be. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go to the paper. Um, we're gonna look at this. It's from Brain and Behavior and Immunity. It's from 2022. Uh, it's called Stress-Induced Biological Aging, a Review and Guide for Research Priorities. So the review part is what mainly we're going to be looking at here. If we look at the abstract, basically it says that there's exposure to chronic adverse conditions and the resultant activation of this biological response and this neurobiological response uh, has been associated with increased risk of early onset disease. Uh, and then older biological age. So that led to this hypothesis that exposure to stressful life experiences when occurring repeatedly uh, or over a prolonged period of time may accelerate the rate at which the body ages, uh, at which the cells age. And so there are many mechanisms, we'll kind of go through them, um, but chronic psychosocial stress may impact biological aging as well as neuroendocrine mediators. Neuroendocrine is like our stress response. So these different neurotransmitters like norepinephrine, epinephrine, glucocorticoids or cortisol um, affecting biological aging. And so they're basically gonna highlight all these different connections between stress and aging. And so uh, we'll kind of go through here in a sec. Uh, what I want to discuss first in this introduction is just how down here, psychosocial stress is a broad term that encompasses many different experiences that occur over a lifespan, including early life adversity from uh, childhood trauma, uh, childhood disease, losing, losing a loved one at a young age, um, maybe needing to be a caretaker early on, um, low socio socioeconomic status, stressful life events, uh, caregiving, work-related stress, financial strain, discrimination, low social support, interpersonal conflict, loneliness. There are lots of ways that we can become stressed in our lives. And so the idea is that these stresses can affect aging, but the stressful experiences may not enact a lasting physiological toll if the individual, if the person has an adequate reserve for that, that they can enable a successful response or recovery from the stressor. This is important because this is how we can defeat stressors in our life that are causing us to age. Um, so we'll go, we'll start here. Basically, um, concepts modeling or concept models of um, biological aging. So first, biological aging can be described as this gradual process of decline in optimal physiology that occurs over decades of life. That's basically what I was saying before. This process consists of molecular, genomic, cellular levels, and the results of accumulation of damage that leads to 
this pathophysiology and disrupts higher level functions necessary to sustain life. Okay, and so basically the different hallmarks of aging that we can see are like genomic instability, so our genes uh, not being uh, well enough, okay, basically, you know, DNA damage, there's mutations, all these things. Telomere attrition, so telomeres are these little ends that are on DNA that help to kind of like bandage, protect um, DNA from, from outside damage, whether that be oxidants or inflammation. Uh, epigenetic alterations, so epi meaning on top of or around genetics, around genes, basically how the our genes are controlled by our environment. And so based on the environment we're in, the environment the cell is in, there are genetic changes that can occur. Um, loss of proteo, uh, proteostasis, so disruption of cellular systems that cause either this refolding or unfolded, um, misfolded, unstabilization of proteins. Um, the deregulated nutrient sensing, so basically not being able to properly sense different pathways of nutrients and therefore be able to bring nutrients like ions or um, iron or zinc or other things into the cell um, and then therefore improve metabolism and then a couple other ones mitochondrial dysfunction the mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell but they're also essential for uh, cellular homeostasis cellular regulation and so they need to be working properly to give energy to the cell to then also manage other cellular functions um, cellular senescence so basically just as cells age they might just you know stop working and then there has to be a process to get rid of them and then stem cell exhaustion so we have stem cells that help to produce new cells and those stem cells eventually go away as we age and so again decrease stem cell function like renewal immune function blood production um, all decrease with aging and then altered intercellular communication. So just how we communicate over the phone, the internet, uh, in person, cells need to communicate as well. Um, they, they communicate by hormones, by neurotransmitters, by these different little molecules that just go next to each other, uh, or direct communication, okay? So while that happens, um, we basically have all those different hallmarks of aging. And so I just want to show a few figures here about how stress can increase biological aging. And so uh, in this first figure, we have basically our brain and our spinal cord, and we have this stress response that can occur. The stress response, whether it's psychosocial stress, um, whether it's um, just loneliness, whether whatever kind of stress that we encounter during life, okay? And that causes basically release of cortisol from our adrenal gland, epinephrine from our adrenal gland, um, norepinephrine from the, the brain. And those, those neurotransmitters will bind to different cells. And what they do is they increase cellular stress. They lead to mitochondrial damage, where now the things start leaking out of the mitochondria. The mitochondria aren't able to produce um, uh, enough ATP leads to DNA damage. Those like little telomeres are, are damaged. So DNA damage here, which you can see also over here, those little telomeres that are on the ends, the little yellow things on the ends of the chromatins, which is made up of DNA, um, those become damaged. They become shortened. Uh, mitochondrial dysfunction leads to um, other cellular pathways leading to, again, more senescence. Um, then if we go down to the next figure, so now here is more like in that, within that cell. So now we have senescent cell, so an older cell, and a necrotic cell. A necrotic cell is one that's being damaged and dying and releasing these particles called damps that lead to more inflammation. And so when we have senescent cells, when we have cells that are dying, damaged because of stress, then it activates the immune system and can cause more inflammation, more tissue damage, more dysfunction. And then that's where the next figure just talks more about the immune system aspect and how these, again, this epinephrine, norepinephrine, cortisol can bind to immune cells and those immune cells can become affected, basically causing more 
release of these cytokines that are pro-inflammatory, um, IL-6, TNF-alpha, um, that are going to cause more widespread body inflammation, leading to more damage to cells across the whole body. Okay, so what can we do to improve stress, right? When we have a stress response, we have when or we have stressors in our life, we need ways to improve that or to improve our response to it. Part of that might be the way our brain waves are functioning. Are our brain waves uh, too high, too energetic, causing this like really quick response to a stressor rather than being like calm, cool, and collective to it? Um, that might be important to look at. That's looking at brain waves made with a QEEG. Another thing is how can our frontal lobes be able to just control our overactive um, like reptilian brain or deeper stress response brain? Um, are we able to do meditation to calm down our stress response? Are we able to take actions that are necessary in order to get rid of a specific stressor? Um, are we able to take time for ourselves, whether that be rest, relaxation, um, recovery, maybe even just physical activity, physical exercise to decrease our anxiety, our stress in life? Um, are we able to take a vacation? Are we able to um, delegate certain things so that we're not in this chronic stress environment? Are we able to get good sleep? Um, so there are all these things that are important when we do encounter a stressor, that we have a good stress response so that we can clear out that stressor, remove it, so that we do not feel threatened every day of our life. Because if the more we're feeling threatened, the more we're activating that sympathetic fight or flight nervous system, and the more that leads to um, inflammatory molecules and damage to our cells leading to more aging. So, um, I hope you guys like this one. Like to me, I think it's really important to understand how we age because we can figure out ways to counteract it. Uh, and again, one of these ways is with um, stress. And so if we can decrease our stress, that'll be better for our aging. Uh, how do we decrease our stress response? All those things I just mentioned, you know, physical ex exercise, nutrition, um, decreasing just stressors and being able to have a good stress response when stressors come so that we can handle them, uh, have a good outlook on life, maybe have a very good attitude, positive attitude and outlook on life so that uh, we can continue moving forward and be happy with our lives. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Thanks again and have a great day. Stay healthy.